Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a very extremely exciting topic, VAT. Make sure you subscribe with your notifications turned on. Let's uh, get into the video straight away. All right, so uh, VAT. Now, I can't tell you how much I get asked about VAT. Like. Every day, multiple times a day, I get asked about VAT. And although I will always answer you guys, um, it's quite a confusing topic. So what I've done today is just, I've created a video for you guys about explaining a little bit more about VAT and kind of how it works. Now, I just wanna give you a disclaimer straight away before you even watch the video. I am not an accountant. I am not a financial advisor. In essence, I really do not know much about VAT, okay? So I don't know all of the ins and outs. All I know is what I personally need to know. So this is no way advice. This is not saying, you know, watch this video and this is the only video you ever need to watch. This is the only research you ever need to watch. This is not that at all. This is really gonna give you an overview of how it works because it is quite confusing and it took me a long time to actually understand it in terms of what I actually have to pay. So. Please take this with a pinch of salt. What I would do is after you've watched this video, if you're still confused, first of all, leave a comment with what particular section you were, you were confused with. But the big bit of advice before you even watch the video, speak to an accountant. They, they are the people that you need to be speaking to with VAT. Hopefully this will, video will give you an understanding, but do not take this as advice by any means, shape or form. And also, you know, I'm gonna, full disclosure, I could be wrong with some of the information I give you, so I just wanna be a disclaimer there. Check all the facts and figures. I can't say this enough when it's regard to tax or anything financial. Just know what you're doing with your money. Let's get into the video right now. So VAT can be very complicated. It is quite complicated, but I'm gonna try and make it as easy for you as possible by just giving you an example, okay? So the first thing you have to be aware of is that in the UK, uh, we have something called VAT. Now VAT, guys, oh, I need a pen, I need a pen. V A, yes, this is how today's gonna happen, guys. VAT stands for value added tax. And what that means is that every time value, money, is added to a product or service, you pay tax, okay? That's the easiest way to think about it. Every time value is added, you pay tax on the added value, okay? Now VAT at the moment is 20%, okay? So it's quite a lot, 20%, right? So when you go and you fill up your car with fuel, 20% of the money you pay is VAT. When you go and buy a computer from a shop, you know, it's a thousand pounds, 20% of that is VAT and it, go, it goes to the government, okay? Um, when you use PPC on Amazon, okay, you spend your money on your PPC, your advertising, 20% goes to government. So anytime value is added, you have to t pay 20%. Now, there are a few things you need to be aware of because when you are a UK company that has turned over under 85,000 pounds, you don't have to register to pay VAT on the final selling price of your product or service. However, you still have to pay VAT on products and services that you use and you buy. Just like if you were to go up to fill your, fill your car up to fuel, you would pay VAT. Doesn't matter if you're a VAT registered company or not, when you actually go and pay for it, you're paying for the VAT. It only comes to the accounting period at the end. If you're VAT registered, you can then offset what you've paid for your fuel on your company VAT bill, okay? Now, that may not make sense in the moment, but it will do shortly. If you're a company and you turn over, turn over under 85,000, you don't need to register for VAT. Once you turn over 85,000 pounds, then you have to register for VAT, okay? That's just what happens. Um, now, if you do that in three months, then you do it in three months. If it takes you 11 months, it takes you 11 months. But the what you have to do is, if your turnover exceeds that within 12 months, within a rolling 12 months period, then you have to register, okay? If you're abroad, so if you're in the United States and you're using Amazon to fulfill your products and stuff like that, then you have to register for VAT straight away. So it doesn't matter if you haven't turned over 85,000 pounds, you have to register straight away because you're keeping the goods within the UK, you're using all of the you know services in the UK and they're going to UK customers, so you have to pay VAT. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you an example with a product um, that we might do on Amazon, okay? So we are gonna get our product, we are gonna get our product, okay? And we're gonna order it from China, so here's our product. And the value of this product at the moment is gonna be one pound. So let's say one pound, which includes our customs, our delivery and stuff like that. We're then gonna have it shipped to the UK. Now, my writing is gonna be really good on this. It's gonna be shipped to the UK. As Soon as it enters the UK, 
we need to pay VAT because at the moment it hasn't got any. So the starting price is one pound and VAT is 20% as we, as we know from earlier, okay, 20%. So what we do is we add on VAT. So that then becomes one pound 20 because the VAT is 20 pence. Now if you don't know how to work that out, then all you do is you take the price, one pound, times it by 0.2, and it will give you the VAT, okay? So we now want our product price now becomes one pound 20. Okay, that's what we've paid, one pound 20. And our total VAT we've paid is 20p so far. Hopefully that makes sense. If it makes sense, give me a little like, if it makes sense by now, okay? So when you import your goods into the United Kingdom, HMRC will basically charge you 20p for your one pound spent. Okay, now if you have a thousand units, of course, it will be 20% of a thousand units. We then go on to the next section. So it's got up here, and our products get to Amazon. So we're gonna do a little Amazon here, okay? Now when we're in Amazon, there are a few things that have to be paid, okay? So we might spend money on things like PPC, so advertising. Let's put that in all the box. We also might spend money on things like, well, we definitely will, on FBA fee. So that's the fulfillment fee. Now, as Amazon is a company and they are, you know, definitely over the threshold of 85,000 pounds, they have to charge VAT, okay? So everything they do, they have to pay VAT because they're adding value, right? So the PPC, uh, let's say we spent two pounds on PPC, okay? Let's say the RFBA fee is four pounds, just, let's just say it is, probably not. Okay, so our total that we've paid, right? The total we've paid is we've paid six pounds in fees, okay? Now, because we've paid six pounds in fees, we've actually added value to the product, okay? So the product value, you know, is no longer one pound 20, and it's now gonna be seven pounds 20. So you get that, one pound 20 plus six, because we're not gonna sell it for one pound 20 because we make a loss. So because we've added value, VAT, we've added value, value's been added, we then pay tax on that money. So if you notice, within Seller Central, you'll get basically a tax bill every month. Uh, and they'll say you how much VAT that you've paid. So six pounds, 20% of six pounds is one pound 20, okay? So VAT at 20%, oh yeah, 20%, that makes sense, one pound 20. So at this point, we've, we've just sold our product, which we're gonna go on to in a minute. We're just gonna go up to here, we're gonna go sell, and I'll give you the selling price and the final the final step, okay? So at this point, we've paid 20p to import our goods to the UK in VAT. We've then paid £1.20 on our bills, that we, you know, PPC, FBA fees, and things like that, because they're costs that we have to, to use, they're costs that add value to our product. So our total so far is £1.40 for VAT. We paid £1.40 VAT. We then go to sell our product, and let's say we sell it for £15. Okay, now on Amazon in the UK, if you're not from the UK, 15 pounds, uh, that's including everything. So I know in the US, it might be like, you know, the 15 pounds plus tax, but we don't do that in the UK. When you see the price, that is the price, you don't pay any extra for VAT, okay? Uh, and that's, you know, unless you're a business and you're doing B2B. So 15 pounds, now if you're not VAT registered, so remember earlier I said about a company that, uh, if you know, if you're turnover under 85,000 pounds in a 12 month period, you don't have to register for VAT. You will pay all of these fees here. So you'll pay all of this, okay? Ooh. You'll pay all of this VAT, but what you do not have to do is this next section, okay? So this is what you do not have to do. Whereas if you're VAT registered, you have to do this. This is the key difference. So 15 pounds. Now we have added value. So the value has been added to the product because it's now 15 pounds. It was, you know, uh, seven pounds, what was it? Seven pounds 40 or whatever it was. So we now need to pay 20% VAT, okay? Because every time value is added, you have to pay tax. This figure, 20% of 15 pounds is three pounds. But hang on a minute, we've already paid one pound 40 VAT, right? So we don't have to pay another three pounds. So what we do is we do three pounds minus what we've already paid in VAT, which is one pound 40, okay? And the new total, is going to be, this is left to pay, left to pay, like it, £1.60. Okay, you see how I worked that out? £3, which is our total VAT bill. We've already paid £1.40 in VAT, so we have left to pay £1.60 to HMRC, okay? 
That's what we've got left to pay in VAT because we've already paid VAT before. However, this isn't the only cost that you incur when you run a company. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you need to pay for to actually sell your product. So you might have, uh, for example, a computer and you may have paid VAT or you would have paid VAT to buy that computer. So when you go to like Apple, for example, and you spend a thousand pounds on a computer, if that's where you buy your computers from, as part of that cost, you pay 20% VAT. So 200 pounds is VAT. And of course, uh, uh, Apple will go through the same process to make that as tax efficient as possible. So when it comes down to your accounting, you've paid 200 pounds VAT already for your computer. So you can offset that against your final VAT bill. Now this is where your accountant comes in and this is where they can be very clever with VAT and your expenses and things like that. But the core idea is that anytime value is added, right, at each stage of the production chain, the production, the supply chain, and you're spending money, you're adding value to a product, you have to pay VAT on it. Remember, the only thing that is different for VAT registered companies is, first of all, they have to charge VAT on the final selling price where they actually sell the product or service, but also they can offset how much they pay on what they have already paid before. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. For anyone that is just starting out, you only need to be worried about this step right here in terms of what you are obliged to pay in VAT, just like anyone else, right? Just like if you had a business or if you don't have a business, if you go to a shop and you buy something, you are paying VAT. The only difference is like if you're a plumber, for example, and you go to buy plumbing materials, they would quote you in excluding, you know, X VAT is what you, they would say. So if they say it was X VAT, it means it's not including the VAT. So that's normally how they would speak. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. If it doesn't, let me know down in the comments. I will do a follow-up video for you guys. And if there's any particular area that you want me to explain further, then just let me know. Um, paying VAT is very, very easy. Uh, when you get to this point here, when the goods enter the United Kingdom, then if you're using a company like FedEx or if you're using a freight forwarder, they would organize it for you. You just have to pay the bill. Um, when you're at this stage here, then PPC and Amazon FBA fees, again, Amazon will charge you for those. Uh, they will charge you VAT and that can either come off your selling price or it can come off the cards if you set up a card with Amazon, like a credit card or a debit card. Uh, and in here, you pay your VAT online. It's nice and easy to do that. At this stage, I would have an accountant work this all out for you. you know, don't take my advice on any stuff. This isn't financial advice, of course. This is just an example. Um, so what I would really advise doing is speaking with an accountant. Don't get to this stage and not have an accountant. That would be really reckless. Um, as soon as you start making money, or even before you start making money, I would speak with an accountant, get some you know, actual financial advice about how to manage your money. Because you, know, you may think to yourself, our oh, accountants cost a lot of money. I am telling you hands down, they will save you way, way more than they cost you. Otherwise, you know, accountants <laughs> wouldn't work very well. Okay? They will save you so much money. So as soon as you have the ability to you know, uh, you know, have a meeting with one, go and do it. Quite a lot will have meetings for free so they can gain your custom. Uh, but definitely go and meet with a few accountants so they can advise you on this sort of stuff. And um, I have my accountant do everything for me. So they do the VAT, like they do everything for me because do you know what? I'm not very good at maths. I'm not, you know, I'm not an accountant. I don't know how uh, the system works in terms of what you can claim, what you can't claim, how long you can claim it over, all the assets and things like that. They go, you know, they study for a long time. They take a huge amount of tests to become an accountant. Trust their judgment, go with them. And if look, and because if I did it, I'd probably mess up and I'd probably get fined a bunch of money. Let them do it, it's way better. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. If it did, thumbs up, leave a comment down below. If you want me to go into anything a little bit more, again, comment down below and I can go into it a little bit more. Hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, stay tuned for the next one. I'll see you very soon, bye-bye.